Hello, welcome people. In this video, we will look at herpes virus, a very important topic for the exam. So, <clears throat> herpes virus is actually a DNA virus. Okay, so look at the virus. Virus can be DNA virus or RNA virus, right? And in DNA virus, you have herpes virus. So, this is what we have already seen in virology introduction, remember? So, now look at the DNA virus. What and all DNA viruses are there actually? So, there are a lot of DNA virus like herpes virus is DNA virus, Paro, parvoviride is a DNA virus, papilloma virus are DNA virus, pox virus are DNA virus, adenoviride are also DNA virus. So, DNA virus, what and all can you say? Herpes, parvo, papilloma virus, pox virus, that is smallpox etc. Then adenovirus. Okay. So the DNA viruses are what? Which are the DNA viruses? Can you list them? DNA viruses are herpes, parvo, papilloma, pox, adenovirus. Thank you. So all these are DNA virus guys. Now <clears throat> let's move on so you know all the DNA virus now look at the herpes virus okay let's look at the herpes virus Oops. okay so in herpes virus there are eight right you can see one to eight herpes virus one to eight are there correct now <clears throat> first herpes virus human herpes virus one human herpes virus two human herpes virus three so look at these. The first virus is actually simplex virus. This is what we will be studying also. Herpes simplex virus. Then you have herpes simplex virus 2. Then you have uh, varicella zoster virus. Then you have the cytomegalovirus. The cytomegalovirus is 5. Herpes, human herpes virus 5 is cytomegalovirus. Then you have uh, 6 and 7. There is no special name given here. So 6 and 7 you can ignore. 4 has actually come down. Epstein-Barr virus which causes info, uh, infectious mononucleosis. This has come down. I am not sure why. They put the Epstein-Barr virus here. <clears throat> then you have the hep uh, human herpes virus 8. That is Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus. Probably this causes Kaposi sarcoma. So did you understand this much? The different types of herpes uh, virus. So tell, tell the different types of herpes virus. <clears throat> 1 and 2 are simplex. 3 is varicella zoster. Okay, then you have 5 is cytomegalovirus, 4 is actually here, you can see 4 is Epstein-Barr virus, correct? Then you have 5 cytomegalovirus, 6, 7 not important, you can forget that and 8 is Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus, okay? So did you understand this much? So the different herpes virus you understood, right? Okay, so let's move on then. The morphology of herpes virus. So herpes virus morph morphology we will look at now, okay? So basically look at this diagram and based on this diagram we will try to explain. So there is a, <clears throat> it is perical, it has icosahedral symmetry, right? And um, <clears throat> it is a DNA virus, that much you know, it is double stranded DNA, it is having linear DNA, double stranded. The only uh, one which has uh, circular DNA is this one. Papilloma virus has circular um, double stranded DNA. Which one has single stranded DNA? Parvo virus. Otherwise, always it is double stranded DNA linear only. Two exceptions. Parvo has single stranded DNA. It's so a very small, so it has probably single stranded DNA. Single. And papilloma is circular. Papil o o o ma. Papilloma. Oma circular. Okay. Moving on. So let's look at the morphology now. So the nucleocapsid, nucleocapsid is there. You can see this pink color hexagon shape. That is the nucleocapsid. That is the icosahedral capsid or the nucleocapsid. And uh, the outer pink line, what you're seeing, that is the envelope. Okay, so that is the lipid layer and the glycoprotein spike. These two together form the envelope. Between the nucleocapsid and the envelope, you can see some purple circles, right? These are tegument. What are these? Tegument, okay. Now these tegument actually, they are uh, some uh, kind of amorphous uh, asymmetric structure called as tegument. Nothing much explained there. That's all they have told in the textbook. Then, what is the unique feature of herpes virus? Okay, 
So basically the genome contains several reiterated or repeated genes which undergo sequence arrangement between them, the members. Okay, so basically some repeated sequence of genes are there in herpes virus DSA. Then moving on, there is no DNA homology between the members except 1 and 2 have uh, some homology, 6 and 7 exhibit some sequence homology. Too much for you, I think. That meant no, you can, you can leave. Now coming to replication, we are looking at the replication of uh, herpes virus. They take place in the host cell. Obviously, all virus needs host cell to replicate. And uh, the similar, very similar replication to other DNA virus, okay. So here, the only difference is that this linear DNA becomes circular inside the host cell. Okay. So, that's one thing you can remember. DNA, DNA of herpes virus, linear DNA of herpes virus becomes circular inside host. Okay. So, this is called as rolling circle mechanism. We are saying. Otherwise, everything you know, no? Should we uh, tell more about morphology enough? Let's move on. So, morphology of herpes virus done, guys. So, we saw the nucleocapsid, which has icosahedral symmetry. Then you have the tegument. Then you have the envelope, which has the glycoprotein and the lipid layer. Now, coming to the DNA. The DNA is uh, a double-stranded uh, linear DNA. And uh, the thing is, the replication of uh, herpes virus happens in the host cell, where this linear DNA becomes circular inside the host cell. Okay, so that is called as some rolling circle mechanism. Moving on. We didn't mention tegument. Tegument is there between the icosahedral capsid and the envelope. There is tegument. Coming to classification. Classification of uh, herpes virus. Uh, you have alpha, beta, gamma. The same thing whatever you saw now. H, uh, human pap, uh, human. Herpes virus 1, human herpes virus 2, human herpes virus 3 are alpha fam subfamily. 5, 6, 7 are beta and gamma you have 4 and 8. 4 was Epstein-Barr virus, 8 was some Kaposi sarcoma associated uh, herpes virus, remember? Now 5 was what? Cytomegalovirus, correct? 6 and 7 not important. 1 is simplex, simplex 1 and 2 is simplex 2, correct? And what was 3? Varicella zoster. You remember or not or forgot everything? Just go back one, uh, two slides and check this. First one is herpes simplex virus type 1. Second one herpes simplex virus type 2. Third one is um, varicella zoster. That's the chicken pox uh, uh, what causes that varicella zoster virus. Then you have cytomegalovirus. Then you have uh, 6 and 7 leaf. 4 is Epstein-Barr virus which causes infectious mononucleosis and 8 is Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus. So classification of uh, herpes virus is almost done. I think this much if you write it's enough for now. Don't go into too much of detail as of now. Okay, then <clears throat> we'll move on to herpes simplex virus. Details of herpes simplex virus. Let's move on. So, herpes simplex virus, uh, what and all, uh, it is the first, right? Herpes simplex virus is what? It is human herpes virus 1, correct? HHV1, it is human herpes virus 1, it is, uh, and 2 also, human herpes virus 2 also. So, this one is what? Human uh, herpes simplex virus type 1, this will be herpes simplex virus 2, okay? Now, you need to know the difference between 1 and 2. 1 actually causes uh, lesions above the waist and humans, uh, what is this, herpes simplex virus 2 causes lesions below the waist. So, this will mainly affect the genital area. This is upper uh, body, above waist. It will affect. Okay, this much for our beginning, it's enough. Now, move on to herpes uh, simplex virus. Um, so, what are they, what and all you know about it? It is alpha subfamily of herpes and um, all about herpes, the same morphology and all you can write. Now, mainly when you say <clears throat> pathogenesis, right, you have primary infection, latent infection and recurrent infection. So, this is something, this latency, na, very important in herpes, okay. Now, coming to how exactly this primary infection happens. Like if it is uh, 
human uh, herpes simplex virus what is herpes simplex virus one then uh, oropharyngeal contact skin contact all those will matter however it if it is uh, herpes simplex virus 2 this is because of sexual contact or it can be because of vertical transmission this you understood right because uh, uh, herpes simplex virus causes genital lesions correct so as this causes genital lesions you can guess that it is through sexual contact or because of mother to fetus that will be a vertical transmission now hsv1 because of oro pharyngeal contact or direct skin contact okay but which remember which one is sexual contact simplex virus 2 only is simple, is going to be sexual contact okay so we are looking at uh, primary infection now look at the site of infection this was the transmission transmission so how you initially get it how initially people get this infection the virus then site of infection site of infection basically the hsv virus the human simplex virus they replicate in the local site of infection they produce lesion anywhere but commonly the hsv1 lesions are confined to the area above the waist and hsv produces lesions below the waist this also you know so site of infection is the sole okay fine now moving on spread via nerve how do these spread via nerve spread via nerve now virus what happens it invades the local nerve so what happens the virus invades the local nerves and it is transported by retrograde axonal flow to the dorsal root ganglia where it replicates further and undergoes latency so it will just be sitting there right so mainly in the dorsal root ganglia they'll undergo latency okay i'm thinking dorsal root ganglia right for uh, hsv1 it is the trigeminal ganglia and for hsv2 it is the sacral ganglia this makes sense right because trigeminal you know where right in the face so let's use this man's photo <laughs> trigeminal ganglia and here the sacral ganglia so obviously below the waist this hsv sacral ganglia hsv1 trigeminal ganglia okay now coming to latent infection now let us see what they mean by latent infection so what happens <clears throat> the human what is this herpes simplex virus they undergo latency in neurons okay so the hsv1 undergoes latency in trigeminal ganglia and hsv2 undergoes latency in the sacral ganglia so already we have told okay here actually what we said spread via nerve so this is retrograde grade axonal spread they are saying retro grade axonal spread right that's what we saw now let us move on to latent infection latent infection hsv1 hsv2 so hsv1 in trigeminal ganglia hsv2 in sacral ganglia is this much clear guys then there is a non replicating state sometimes it does not replicate and there is some micro rna which maintains the latent infection and prevents cell death okay so some non replicating state is there where it will some micro rna maintains micro rna maintains the virus so no cell death but it won't replicate also okay something is there i didn't understand myself moving on recurrent infection now recurrent infection there is reactivation i think we need a break right take a mental break take a deep breath we are done with the primary and latent infection of herpes virus so that is the simplex herpes simplex virus now let us move on to recurrent infection okay 
Now, recurrent infection means these latent virus, what will happen? They'll reactivate. They will be somewhere hidden. No, they will again come back. Reactivation of these latent virus will happen. Of herpes simplex virus, then what you will do? What you actually see here? So, basically there will be some stimuli like fever or some injury or some emotional stress or exposure to ultraviolet rays. Something will happen, okay, Some due to some stimuli. These virus which are latent, they decide to become active, okay. So then what will happen? The virus goes back to the peripheral nerves, okay, and they replicate in the skin or mucosa and they produce secondary lesions. So the virus goes back, okay, to peripheral site and uh, they cause secondary lesions in skin mucosa etc fine there is something called as uh, rec that's what we are looking at recurrent infection these are less extensive less severe okay that's good only right because of presence of pre-existing host immunity and uh, these recurrences can be asymptomatic also okay but the thing is uh, they can they can transmit the disease to others okay these are actually less severe they can be asymptomatic Automatic because of host immune, because of pre-existing host immune. Okay. But the problem is the virus are shed into secretion. So you might find a person who is really nice and he has no disease and all, and you'll be like, wow. And the person goes into contact with this person and this person gets the disease because that guy was shedding the virus into secretions. All the best when you are trusting others. Okay, so herpes simplex virus pathogenesis is done, done, done. Now we will move on. How many people want a break at this point? We will come back and look at the herpes simplex virus clinical manifestations etc. Right? Take a deep breath again. Very good. So now let us look at um, what we have left. Clinical manifestations of herpes simplex virus. Then epidemiology may be not very important for exam. Lab diagnosis very important. We will come for that. Treatment also very important. Acyclovirus drug of choice. So this much is herpes simplex virus. After finishing herpes simplex virus, we have to look at um, what is the 3? Virus 3. What is the... Third virus test, I forgot, can you remind me what's the third virus? Okay, so we have to look at varicella zoster, then we will look at cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, all these we have to look at, okay. To continue with herpes simplex virus, come back for the next video, bye-bye.